How's it going? Doing great, man. How are you doing? Yeah, we're doing all right. We're hanging in. So Americans don't have enough to be afraid about. Now they got to be afraid to go uh, do rental properties on weekend <laughs> vacation trips. What, what, are you, what are you doing with this movie, man? <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, I, I promise it was not my intention to uh, freak everyone out and, and take down Airbnb or anything like that. Um, but this whole thing, it, it definitely was inspired by my own paranoia about the concept of home sharing, where... Okay. I think about how the country is as divided as it's ever been and no one trusts each other, yet we trust staying in the home of a stranger simply because of a few positive reviews online. Sure. And, you know, all that being said, I, I still use Airbnb and I actually stayed in an Airbnb while filming this movie. And I think I was just trying to explore this, this disconnect where we are all aware of the risks of staying in a stranger's home, but we never think anything bad will actually happen to us. And what I love about this movie too, and I and I truly did love it, um, Thanks, is man. you know the uh, for really the first half or so of the movie, it's really more of a if it wasn't for like the creepy score and like you know <laughs> the, just the, the mood, it's it's really just kind of like an intriguing like character drama with like all these connections between the characters, and then uh, it kind of what I like about it is because you're you're anticipating you know having watched horror movies, you're anticipating something happening. Yeah. Um, but then when it starts happening, you, you can't see what's coming you know, yeah, to know good. exactly what's happening. Yeah. I love, I love everything you're saying. I mean, yeah, one of our goals from the beginning was to create a, um, a tense relationship drama where the, the interpersonal issues between the characters were just as thrilling as the fact that there's a, a psycho lurking in the shadows. And, um, and that being said, like we, we did want to create tension from the opening shot with the music and the visuals and everything where it's this, this simmering kind of tension underneath yeah. that slowly grows throughout the film. Right. Uh, but it takes its time to really get under your skin. And I was, I was inspired by, you know, this, this young group of genre filmmakers like Ari Aster and Jordan Peele and sure, Sean yeah. Birkin, Amy Simons, um, who, uh, whose films are more nuanced and atmospheric as opposed to a lot of horror films that rely too heavily on cheap jump scares. Um, without giving anything away, too, uh, you make choices uh, towards the end to make things a little bit more ambiguous, which yeah. I feel makes it even scarier, you know? Uh, Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I'm glad you felt that way. So it's, it's you know, this is an element of the film where it's hard to discuss without giving too much away. Yeah, yeah. But what I will say is um, there were there were early drafts of the script where we had the villain almost um, like monologuing about why <laughs> they were doing what they were doing. And sure. it, just, it, it felt, even in the moment, it felt like this, is, this feels cheap and kind of yeah. preachy and dumb. Right. And so once we stripped all that away, we realized that, um, well, first off, it felt just more in, in, in line with the tone of the rest of the movie, just to have it more simple and ambiguous. But sure. it just felt scarier too, yeah. And like, I want to continue talking about that, but I feel like I'm going to say something. Yeah, yeah, it. sure, sure. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, you know, too, th this, is, uh, this is new ground for you. This is, uh, you know, uh, directing feature film uh, is, is a new thing. Is this kind of movie... Uh, what we can expect like is this something that you plan on on kind of doing more of like are you going to be the next Ari Aster or is this like Spielberg doing you know different <laughs> genres <laughs> um, I, yes I just compared you to Spielberg sorry about that I, I, you, you bringing up Ari Aster or Spielberg is amazing um <laughs> I mean I would love to continue to make films within this genre I I do have a pretty strong idea of what I would do with the sequel if we were lucky enough mm -hmm. to do that but I, I also want to do a lot of other things. Like my wife and I, we wrote a romantic comedy during the quarantine. And um, the reason for that is we love the genre, but we, we just kind of looked at all rom-coms over the past like decade. And we feel like the bar has been set pretty low where there's this tendency for those films to have this like overly bright aesthetic and for mm. the acting and the stories to be a little silly and over the top. And so... We, want, we, we started looking back at some of the old school ones that everyone loves, like When Harry Met Sally, Sleepless in Seattle, and Pretty Woman. 
and they're all very grounded. The acting is great, and they're all shot like dramas. Like they look good, and so we were just wondering why does no one approach the the genre in that kind of more smart, tasteful way? And so that's what we're trying to do, and that Sweet. would hopefully be for me to direct and for her to star in again. Well, uh, Dave, I know you got a lot going on, man. Um, I hope people check out the rental. Uh, it's it's really an awesome movie. I really liked it, and I it's really cool to be able to talk to you, man. I'm a fan of yours, so uh, thanks for your time. Really appreciate the kind words, man. All right, man. Take it easy. Let me show you out back, and then I'll get out of your hair. The stars are insane out here. I should have brought the telescope. What do you need a telescope in the city for? Unless you're like a peeping Tom or something. Stop being so calm! Everything is fine!